Hello! You might have noticed I'm not in the studio today, following a, uh, a ruling in which uh, non-essential business has to send people home. I'm going to be recording from my lovely basement for a little while. I'll do my best to keep the uh, quality up to the uh, phenomenal standards that it's been at before. In the meantime, uh, for the next uh, little while, in the foreseeable future, we'll be recording things from home, sending it out there for you guys to enjoy. Uh, we're not exactly sure when. We got a 14-day minimum and beyond, apparently. We'll see. Also, uh, I, m I might have forgot to mention in my last uh, studio videos, uh, I've injured myself. Uh, so anybody who was worried, worry not. It is just a, uh, you know, a, a skateboarding related injury. It's nothing life-threatening, nothing terrible. Uh, it just means that I don't walk as well right now. So, uh, you know, I went in one of the last days we go to the studio, recorded a bunch of videos all at once, and uh, neglected to mention why I was on crutches. So now you know. Uh, no need to worry too much. Thanks for your concern. Uh, let's get on with this video. Short films aren't only great because of their ability to be punchy and to the point. They're also prolific. There's just so gosh darn many of them. You could watch back-to-back -back short animated films for 24 hours and still not have even scratched the surface of all the content that's out there. I can guarantee that at least 100 people are seriously working on short animations right now during this indoor time. I'm lowballing because I don't want to give an insane number and be proven ridiculously wrong, but I think it's true. Technology has advanced over the past few decades to allow for the proliferation of new types of animation as well. New people were introduced to animating, birth new styles, new ideas, and new creations. Scary creations too, especially in the world of horror animation. We've looked at ones from the past and the present before, and today we'll be keeping up with that same trend. Hello horror heads, and welcome back to the scariest channel on YouTube, Top 5 Scary Videos. I'm your horror host, Keegan Hughes, and today we're counting down the Top 5 Scary Horror Animation Short Films, Part 2. Before we get started, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more frame by frame fear. Wicked. Let's begin. Skipping its way into number five, we've got Alma. We've discussed how unsettling dolls are on this channel before, right? Like, if it's pre-Raggedy Ann or Barbie or hell, I'll even count Cabbage Patch, it's not welcome in my home. The dead eyes, the faces with fixed, strange expressions, the tendency to crack and chip away with age, it just ain't right. So when you see a doll dressed exactly like you in an unmarked store window, you know to run away as fast as you can. Because it's cursed, there's no other option but poor Alma, being a French child and all, has no idea that this is wrong. She sneaks into the dark, empty shop to get a closer look at her doppelganger, ignoring some very obvious warning signs, including a little bike riding figure that tirelessly tries to escape the showroom, and the fact that her own doll keeps teleporting without any explanation. Alma carries on. Spellbound, our blonde-haired protagonist is drawn towards the 100% evil doll, and does indeed get what she was looking for. Is this what she actually wanted? Absolutely not, but hey, she went for it anyways. This short sort of ends on a tease, leaving you wanting more. Is the doll in the window supposed to look like exactly the next person to walk by? Why do the other dolls have such very less realistic appearances? Who's making these and why? There's plenty to explore and think about, leaving room for some very interesting and terrifying conclusions. I find that one of the most interesting parts of this short are the other dolls hanging out in the shop. Each is creepy in its own special way, and you'd have to assume that other souls have been trapped as well. Do all these dolls contain people who have written their name on the wall too? How long has this been going on? Sneaking its way into number four, we've got the Sandman. Hopping back a few decades, this is a gorgeous, creepy stop-motion puppet animation by Robert Morgan. This Oscar-nominated short has a very distinct style, kind of like a mix between Leica Studios and the old Puffs Plus commercials. A lot of the world is very stylized, and space is often warped to give a sense of dread and confusion. This is the world through the eyes of a terrified, insomniac child. We begin in a place of warmth and comfort, the living room, chilling with mom and a drum. However, when bedtime rolls around and the child is sent up on his own, everything shifts. Cold, sharp, angular. The dark world of night is a waking nightmare. There are some really excellent effects done up with stop motion to add to this feeling. A stop motion dolly zoom is used to extend a hallway with eye-popping results. Of course, what would a story about the Sandman be without the beastly rendering of the famed sleep giver himself? With bird-like features and a face like the moon, the eyeball-stealing wretch creeps through the house with grace and malice. He deliberately and theatrically makes noise to increase the fear in the boy before doing the sand-filled deed. The animation here is particularly impressive, with the Sandman leaping and twirling around the room, equal parts performative and petrifying. The final shot of the short, after the Sandman feeds his moon babies, will haunt anyone with eyesight for as long as they live. Coming in at number three, there's a man in the woods. Who knew spoken word poetry could be so bone chilling? I can be good. Do you hear that, Sue? There's a man in the woods. 
In this short by then CalArts student Jacob Stralian, we take a look at a man on the edge. Once a proud and principled teacher, he spent his days ensuring his students enjoyed their time at school. But a simple lie told by a greedy student turned that all around. The tale of the man in the woods took root in the minds of all his kindergartners, causing them all to see things that were in all likelihood never there. That's the power of rumors, I suppose. I remember these kinds of stories from the schoolyard and beyond, just pure imagination. However, especially in these days and times, hypothetical danger can be blown out of proportion. There's a Man in the Woods is a dark, unsettling look at how a lie can change everything, especially when combined with lax parenting, the refusal to believe that a child can be dishonest, and extreme actions based on unproven information. The story itself is chilling, but add in the intricate rhyme scheme and emotional performance for a short film that will shake you to your core. The Man's Descent is illustrated with aplomb, starting slow, rhythmic, and quiet before spiraling out of control as the rumors do the same. As he loses control over his life, the animation becomes more abstract, illustrating ideas and feelings instead of what's really happening. This is a telling of the boy who cried wolf, amplified and taken to its modern panicked conclusion. Do you hear that, Sid? There's a man in the woods. Coming in at number two, we've got a cat with hands. Before you get all mad with me, yes, this is indeed a mix of live action and animation. But the fusion is so pitch perfect, it's impossible to disqualify. You have to head down this well into a world of pure imagination, created by Robert Morgan. Just as fever dreamy as the Tunnel of Terror, too. If you're imagining what a cat with hands might look like, you're probably wrong. It's much worse than you would think. Much worse. The creature's more than just a cat with hands, though. It's a demon, hell-bent on becoming something more. Its jaw unhinges, and it'll just absolutely grab whatever it wants, including entire faces. There's nothing quite as shocking as the image of a boy with a flat pane of flesh where his face should be, followed immediately by the cat with hands wearing this missing face. And once you think this animated short has reached its freaky peak, it gets weirder. It gets glitchy and shivery and shimmery and transformagorative, and a big old plot twist is threaded right in. It's impossible to explain and it all happens so fast. So go watch this and revel in the thick accents and try not to pass out when things get shape-shifty. The poem that bookends this short takes on a whole new meaning when the events have finished transpiring. I dreamt of the faces of people I loved and woke with a heart full of cheer. And lastly at number one, we've got the Backwater Gospel. Another miraculous student effort here directed by Bo Mathorn, who was studying at the animation workshop at the time. The Backwater Gospel is an amazingly animated allegory with commentary and religious mania, groupthink, and the power of fear. If we were to boil it all down, the other themes would find themselves stemming from that last one though. Fear. Fear of outsiders. Fear of being different. Fear of being ostracized. In the words of the first villager to go, it's not gonna be me. It might be a little on the nose at times, but the messages get across. Those who fear the most are often the ones who are the scariest. The whole story is wonderfully animated, done up in such a way to make it feel grimy and filthy the whole way through. Backwater is beautifully rendered, playing the part of the perfect sun-scorched backdrop for the deadly events that occur. Everything is angular, stylized, and off-putting as all get out. It feels dry, desolate, and ultimately desperate. And that's just the animation. The story itself is that of a town racked with fear. So much so that the slightest change to their daily lives can cause horrific outbreaks of violence and the violence in here is brutal indeed, even if it's all in silhouette. All thanks to the appearance of The Undertaker, who doesn't actually do anything other than clean up after the mess. The whole thing is scored by Sons of Perdition, who had some very fitting southern gothic sounds to the mix. Outrageous stuff. So, that's 10 total short animated horror films. Only a few thousand more to go, right? What was your favorite on the list? What's your favorite of all time? Make sure you let me know down in the comments. Speaking of comments, let's take a look at some of your more miraculous ones from the top five scary end of the world horror movies. Arel Juanico says, no mention of the film The Road? I actually talked about the novel it was based on on another list. Schedule's been all mixed around lately, so I don't know when that'll see the light of day. D Zerb says, all of these movies are playing out in other realms. You ever had a horror movie like Dream? Well, they're all real. Hey man, I'm down to visit some other realms. Who's got the portal gun primed and ready? Danny Potts says, is it the end of the world? I was banking on zombies, not a sickness. Hey, well we've still got time to reach zombies. They usually start as illnesses anyway. Tizzy WP Black says, hope it's nothing too serious. Look after yourself. Nothing horrific, just a fractured ankle. I'm safe and sound at home with shutter and a bunch of books to keep me sane. John Davidson says, Keegan reminds me of Ferris Bueller's buddy. And I wish I had a rich dad and a big ol' swimming pool to drown in. And that's all the time we have for today. Before I fuse with an alien parasite, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more smooth specters. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.